everyone is welcome here, it's time to make new friends. Akwebide Uskava, fill your Glen Carrot. Share a dram with the spirit of Edmonton. Slancha! Slancha! What do you think of that? That's the first time you've heard it. You like it? Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's a good friend did that for me, so it's good. So good Sounds evening, good. Whiskey brothers, whiskey sisters, and whiskey friends. Welcome to episode 21 of the Canadian Whiskey Journeys Whiskey Review. We're in 21 now. It's our second season because we stopped for the su summer, so let's call it season two. I'm joined, as always, by Blair Phillips, co-author to the Definitive Guide to Canadian Distilleries. And we're commencing season two with 40 Creeks Fox Heart Whiskey. Uh, Blair, you want to hold that bottle up because I don't have that bottle. You hold that up and I'll hold your book up and people can get a good look at both of them. And uh, you know what? Blair also had an article in Whiskey Magazine. So I'm going to pull this article up so you can have a look at it. It's right there. So if you haven't uh, looked at Wh Whiskey Magazine, and this was in July, was it not, Blair? Like yeah, I think so. I think this came out? Yeah. All right. In the article... You rightly focused on this man, oh, right here, Bill Ashburn and, and his puppy. And we'll talk about uh, the puppy in a minute. But he's been with Forty Creek before it was Forty Creek. He distilled for the first owner in your article. He said, Auto, is it Ryder or Reader? Uh, no. Reader. Reader. Uh, in the 80s. So it starts with him in the 80s. And then 92, he's with John Hall. That When it changed names, it and, – and the original name of the distillery, was it just Reader? readers do you remember um yeah the reader distillery and then uh when john hall took it over he he named it kitling ridge oh. and 40 creek was the brand was the whiskey brand of kitling ridge and then uh i i can't remember the exact year but eventually it uh, changed over to 40 creek completely okay and and when campari bought it for 186 million bucks in 2014 it was already 40 creek and and he was there consistently pounding out good whiskeys from the very beginning and we don't think about that or or you do you wrote the article but people don't really and i, I it, it's not just john hall it's not just who started it, it it's bill Bill's the guy that's been there for a long time. And 40 Creek Chris has kind of been pushing for that a little while for the past year. But I really believe he, he doesn't get the kudos he or he deserves. So I'm glad you did in the article. Good. And uh, the article is really about two whiskeys, Forager, which we're not doing tonight, which we could in the future because I like it a lot, and Foxheart. But could you tell us why Foxheart as a name and a brand? And I'll, I'm going to make it big. I think we want to see your big, beautiful face. There you go, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Bill Ashburn, um, he doesn't he doesn't talk about himself a lot, but he's actually uh, he has two passions. Like he makes whiskey. He's been doing it for years. He's also a dog breeder, um, and he, he has um, a bunch of fox heart, fox heart wire terriers, and. Uh, in in the in the dog world, um, there's something called an outcross where you can have something that's in the same family and you put them together and you create something new. Uh, and he put that that uh, dog breed technique to life within this whiskey, uh, where he took um, his famous Canadian Forty Creek whiskey and he just dialed it up a little bit with uh, with some twelve year old Caribbean rum. And so it, let's just start, stick with Foxheart for a second. Was that the name of his first wire fox terrier? Was it the name of another champion out there? Or maybe it's the, the Ashburn Foxheart Estate. That's what he calls the ranch or something. Is yeah, it, and also, uh, and the, the dog breed is uh, a Foxheart. Just the fox. Okay, so yeah. the breed itself, not one of his particularly. Okay. No, uh, the, dog, the dog on the bottle, uh, let's see if I can get that. It's a bit oh. shiny. Um, the dog's name is Ruby, actually. Okay, is that it's probably this one here? I'm guessing that's that's the one, yeah, right there. And we got another good picture of him there. He looks pretty well at home with his puppy. So let's get a man and his dog and his barrels in the background. It's beautiful. Um, yeah. <laughs> so you know what? This this is our first one eleventh bottling that we've reviewed together, and the last bottle that I enjoyed that that was the 9.09 .09 or 111 was Dark Horse and I enjoyed that a lot and we talked about mm -hmm. that in the past but but I like this one just as much 
and I like them both, but uh, I'm wondering if you'd like to explain the much maligned Canadian 111th rule to anyone out there that wants to hear it. Well, in Canadian whiskey, you're allowed to you, you're allowed to add basically 111th of um, another age spirit, let's say. Uh, it could be wine, oak age wine, um, anything that's that's been aged in barrels. I think it's for two years or something like that. Um, and the reason why this came about was uh, the Americans uh, offered a tax cut so that Canadian whiskey going in or Canadian spirits going into the States uh, would get uh, a tax break if they would blend in some, um, some American spirits. Um, this has been going on forever. Uh, usually it's just reserved for bottom shelf brands that, that make that, uh, that voyage from Canada to the States and, and are sold in bulk. Um, but there's some people like Bill Ashburn, uh, who really explore, um, the intricacies of the rule by blending in tiny amounts of really ultra premium spirits. He's taken it and flipped the rule on its, on its head, so to speak. Um, and what he does, he blends in these little, these flavors that, that just dial up the flavor without you really knowing. Yeah. Um, and they're usually very expensive ingredients. Uh, yeah, it's, it's. It's it's good to see someone using it for good like this. Yeah. And and there are several blenders do that do do this now. Um and that seems to be a bit of the trend at the moment. And and there's a couple in Canada. One starts with a B. I don't want to say their name cuz I'm I'm not a huge fan of theirs. So this is since Dark Horse it got discontinued. This is the first one that I've tried that I've I've quite enjoyed. And the rum in it's great. Although I need to know, is it Appleton Estates? Because that's that's owned by Compare Group as well. So yeah, do you know if it's there? Know. No, they, they don't uh, disclose that. Um, okay. All I know is a 12-year-old rum. Yeah. Um, and it's pretty tasty. Yep. And they're not, he's not, like, he's not pouring in, like, he's not measuring in 9.09% .09 rum. He's, like, just a little tiny drop just to get it, uh, to, to brighten it up. But you can taste it. Oh, yeah. Well, let's let's go to the tasting. Let's let's talk about this now. Uh, this comes seven fifty mils, forty percent. Uh, yeah, available throughout Canada online. Roughly forty five bucks. It's a good deal. And mm -hmm. uh, what do you get on the nose other than a bit of rum? Uh, to me, I, I get like lots of those dark, lot of dark notes like dark fruits, dark brown sugar, um, brown little sugar. spice. Uh, yeah. so it, it's really well blended. Um, and there's a bit of a tropical tropical fruit, uh, some citrus, a lot of complexity. I find it's, it's also very tight. Like it's really well composed. It's got their typical Forty Creek aroma nose to it. Mm -hmm. You can tell this is Forty Creek by nose ant. So yeah. you've got that, and not just like Copper Pot. I'm talking about Forty Creek Confederation Oak. They all and what's this year it what's it called masters 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 cut yeah masters cut i'm hoping and and, and we're gonna have that soon because we're gonna do a, our own whiskey weekend the same weekend but i'm hoping that's very similar because I, I do love the nose but i find it really sweet but i think the rum this sounds weird cuts the sweetness i don't understand because it's not as sweet as i usually perceive it no, it's it's sweet on the nose. Starts off sweet, and then as it as the uh, develops, it really dries off. Yeah, and and that's that's what uh, makes this a killer cocktail whiskey as well. By the way, okay, what are you making the cocktails with, or what cocktails are you making? I should say just something simple, uh, something. like old fashions, that kind of stuff. Something yeah. that you let the whiskey really shine, and it's that rum note that that really brings things to the front. Like it, it it's uh, quite special. All right. On the palate, what do we got? So the brown sugar right up front. And I was I was trying to think, was it brown sugar or was it maple? And it was almost mapley to me, but I'm just going to stick with brown sugar. Yeah, I, I'd say brown sugar too and vanilla. Ah. Well, and I, I'm trying to pull out the notes that are not traditionally rum and just say those. <laughs> I feel like it's, it's hard. It's rum. hard, yeah, because he... You get pulled into rum land, but there's a lot of nice peppery spices from the whiskey as well. Mm. Nice mouthfeel. Mm -hmm. uh, the finish is medium. Work. It's not really changing. It doesn't change in complexity very much. Do you get anything changing on the end? Maybe uh, it gets just a drier. Bit, yeah, so it's a little bit drier 
Uh, yeah. And then you have a little bit of that toasted oak coming in. Um, mm. Yeah. Excellent. Just quick shout out to Paul Walters and Fort Mac and Cheryl and uh, Kent. Where are they? Kenmore and Calgary. So they're listening to us on the road. So that's kind of nice. How you doing, guys? And uh, yeah, I'm trying. There, there's a flavor I'm trying to hit on that's not a traditional rum flavor and not a regular Forty Creek flavor. It, this would be fun if I actually just had a copper pot and had some rum and just started mixing it to see if I could get to the same point. But <laughs> there seems to be a flavor I'm missing in there too. There's a lot going on. Mm. And it's that, it's that whirlwind of different things happening. That uh, All right. You can try pulling it apart or enjoy it as a whole. And we're just yeah. going to enjoy it as a whole. So ladies and gentlemen, whiskey friends, that's it. This has been number 21, and we are going to see you all next week. Uh, Blair and I haven't decided what we're doing next week, but uh, we're going to give this one a thumbs up. Buy it, 45 bucks. It's well worth having out there. Um, straight for me in cocktails for and straight for Blair. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you very much, Cancer. Talk to you later. Talk to you later. Cheers. Cheers.